All right, everyone. I am here with uh, Mike Katz, Chief Marketing Officer of T-Mobile. Thank you for joining TV Disrupt. Yeah, thanks for having me, Sean. Now, as I mentioned, Mike couldn't join us live, so I drove across town here uh, to T-Mobile's headquarters in Bellevue, Washington, which is also where iSpot's headquarters are here. And uh, we are in uh, Mike's living room. <laughs> Uh, or actually, it's, it's a brand new studio you guys have just built here, right? We have. I, I think if I installed the T into my real living room, I'd have some uh, explaining to do at home. Yeah, yeah. I'm, sure, I'm sure you would. <laughs> I'm sure you would. Uh, now, Mike, you were just named Chief Marketing Officer of T-Mobile recently, so congrats on that. Thanks. But you are no stranger to T-Mobile. Um, so you have been at T-Mobile for how long now? This is my 24th year at T-Mobile. That is amazing. Uh, yeah, that, I, was, that, I, like I was telling you off camera, the labor laws were a lot different back then. So, you know, you could start when you were 12 <laughs> and it was cool and, yeah. you know, it was a different time. Yeah, because I'd say you don't even look old enough to have worked for 24 years. <laughs> so so that, that's amazing. So obviously, you're no stranger to T-Mobile. So can you take our audience through just briefly like your history here at T-Mobile? Because you've obviously had a lot of leadership positions and you've done a lot here. So I'd love to hear more about that. Yeah, it's been, you know, for me, an amazing experience. I, I, st I started with the predecessor company of T-Mobile, which was called Voice Dream Wireless, a small regional wireless company. And I actually started while I was still in college as a part-time seasonal employee. Uh, I, had, I had a job working at a couple of very illustrious retailers selling Voice Dream inside of them. One was Sears and one was Circuit City. So yeah, it kind of, kind of takes you what was going on 24 years ago. And then I've had the opportunity to do a bunch of different things in my career. I, sp I spent the first portion of my career, probably five or six years, in sales roles. Uh, I, I moved up to, to Bellevue in 2007 and worked in our corporate strategy organization. And then I took on several different roles inside marketing, starting with running our prepaid business in marketing. Uh, I then ran our consumer marketing business. I spent the last six years running our business, our B2B business, uh, more, more in like a general manager job as the president of our B2B business. And then, yeah, just recently uh, came back into consumer marketing and run all of marketing as CMO. Right. So, um, and well, let me tell the audience a little bit about yourself. So, where were you born? I was born, I, I, was, I was born technically in Houston, Texas. Okay. And, but I li we only lived, my parents both went to school in Texas. We only lived there for a couple months. Uh, I grew up in Colorado. So I consider, I consider myself, uh, yeah. although not technically, and I, sh I don't want to admit this on TV, a Colorado native, but I was technically born <laughs> in Houston. And where'd you go to college? I went to college at Colorado State University. Yeah. You play any sports? I did. I, I, I started at Colorado State as a baseball player, uh, then became injured, then uh, led me to my seasonal part-time job <laughs> at Voice Dream. <laughs> And how, you have any kids? How many kids you got? Uh, we have four children, and we've got some range at the cat's house. I, I have a 16-year-old daughter who's going to be a senior next year. And I have a 14-year-old son, an 11-year-old daughter, and then I have a 5-year-old son who will be a kindergartner next yeah, year. That's, yeah. that's a great, great, uh, great range. All right, so let's talk about, so TV Disrupt is all about the disruption that's happening in measurement. And you guys know all about disruption. I want to talk a little bit about the DNA of disruption. Can you talk about how T-Mobile disrupted the, the wireless uh, space? Yeah, I mean, you know, a, a big part of our success over this last 10 years was our strategy to take what we believed was a pretty broken industry and flip it on its head. You know, if you, if you go back in wireless 10 years ago, this was an industry that people loved the technology. Even 10 years ago, your phone was like the most important thing that you had. You, you, it would be like the one thing that if you left on a road trip and you realized you didn't have your phone, you would actually turn around and go get. So people loved the technology, but they hated the people that gave it to them. They hated it. And they hated it because they treated, the, the, the carriers treated people terrible. They treated people terrible and they had a bunch of one-sided rules that worked for them, but not for customers. And when, when we launched the Uncarrier, which is, which is what we've uh, called ourselves, our strategy really was to center ourselves around customers. You know, really, really understand what customers' expectations were of this category, and ensure that we had uh, a culture and a, a set of principles that were built around delighting customers and bringing them the, the most incredible customer experiences, and then positioning ourselves as the antithesis of the other guys. You know, what, all the things that they did, our plan was to go undo them. And we, we started that in 2013 with a series of moves that started with eliminating contracts, 
I mean, can you remember that? Like 10 years ago, people still had contracts yeah. for their wireless yeah. phone. And if you, did, if you didn't sign a contract, you couldn't get a phone. Once you were in a contract, it was almost impossible to leave because right. you had hundreds of dollars of fees. So we eliminated contracts, we eliminated international roaming, we uh, brought unlimited wireless services for the first time into the US. Right. And so one by one, we, we knocked down all these pain points. And one of our measures of success certainly was growth, which the, it, led to, it led to tremendous growth. But a big measure of success for us was, were we changing the industry? Were we causing the other guys to actually go do these, these exact same things. And what we've seen over the, the last 10 years is our competitors have copied almost every single thing that we've done, and it's been for the, to the benefit of customers. The entire satisfaction of this category has gone up as a result of some of the fundamental changes that we drove into the industry. Yeah. So th it's so interesting, because this sounds like everything that's, that's, that's happening in measurement uh, today. In fact, we should almost call it the unmeasurement uh, <laughs> movement here, but but it, a lot of the similar things that are happening uh, in, in 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 wireless are happening in measurement. People aren't happy with what's being delivered. Uh, the service that's being delivered is not really keeping up with demands. Uh, the industry has changed. The the service itself has to change uh, to service uh, both consumers and advertisers. So what what lessons? can we take as an industry here in, in measurement from what you guys have gone through the transformation of, of your industry? What parallels do you see here? Yeah, I, I think a couple. Um, for me, it, it starts with what I was mentioning a second ago. It starts with the customer. I, I think it's so important that you understand the customer, who they are, what their expectations are, and in, and in the case of what we're talking about here, where are they? Where are they and how are they consuming content? And like you just said, I, I think that's probably one of the most dramatic changes that we've seen over certainly the last decade, but you right. know, especially over the last few years is cust uh, c customers, consumers, people that we're trying to reach are consuming content in completely new places. You know, uh, it's a lot of content consumption has shifted from linear TV into streaming services. Right. Uh, a lot of the content is being, is being time shifted and not being consumed real time anymore. Uh, so I, I, I think it starts with first really having a solid understanding of what, what's happening with the customer, where they are, and how they're consuming content. Um, I, I think that's, that's first and foremost. Um, and then I, I, I think, you know, for me and for us at least, you know, we, we are kind of in a position where even though we're a big advertiser, uh, we operate in one of the most advertised spaces right. in, in, out of any industry in the country. Right. And, uh, I still, I, our budget still is smaller than the other guys, so I have to make every single dollar work harder, and it really is imperative for us then that we are making data-driven decisions, okay. that we are understanding, you know, what is what is the impact of every dollar that we're spending, okay. and t uh, reading reading the impact, quickly getting the data, and then uh, reacting and optimizing what what we're doing, and we have to have a uh, a virtuous cycle of of uh, learning, receiving data, and then and then changing our executions, um, because because I, we have the burden of, like I said, making every single one of our dollars work right. harder. Right. And, and so you guys have sort of understood, I, I believe, for a while now, that the legacy of measurement really hasn't served the needs of the advertiser. Right. You guys have really been using non-Nielsen yeah. measurement approaches since 2015. Yeah. Uh, I believe so. So, are, w what were some of the areas that you fe felt like you guys had to go into a different, a non-legacy, the, the unmeasurement <laughs> solution? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think for us it was a couple things. One, it was you know some of the traditional measurement systems actually were recording audience when there was no audience present. You know, the TV could be turned off and right. cable boxes on, and it, li and it looks like somebody's watching programming. I think that's that that was a big one. And then I think the second one is the trend that we were talking about a second ago, which is audiences moving from a linear TV formats right. into streaming formats, and we needed measurement systems that, ca that captured all of that, right. uh, especially as the, the trend uh, increases and, and more and more people are consuming on, on streaming. So I, th I think for us, those were a couple of the really, really big ones. Um, you know, we, we wanted to make sure that we had the most accurate and most real-time view of where our customers that we were trying to target were. Right. And, you know, we feel like some of the you know, new contemporary um, people out there, like like iSpot, were, were ones that 
uh, could give us a right. more current real-time right. view. And you guys saw that. I mean, you guys for years and years have been investing in mm. where the consumer is and, and, and have been ahead of the curve. So it's, it's really great, uh, great to see that. So let's talk about, so obviously you, you've been uh, a senior executive at T-Mobile for a long time, so you know the, the lay of the land. But as chief marketing officer, what are your top goals? How, how will your success be measured here as chief marketing officer? Yeah, well, a, a couple of very specific things. The first one probably most chief marketing officers feel like, but I, I think for me, one of the things that I will, be, I will be judged on, and frankly I'm judging myself on, is are we creating a more unique, distinct brand? Right. You know, are, are we, when, when customers look at T-Mobile and they compare us to the two people I compete against, uh, do they understand and see us as something different than, the, than those other guys? And I, I think we've done a great job of that for years, and I think there's a lot more we can do. And I, I feel so fortunate in starting this job at the time that I am, because 10 years ago when we were uh, first launching on Carrier, we were able to create this incredible differentiation with honestly not a whole lot of assets. You know, and 10 years ago we didn't have the best network. Uh, we were a standalone company. We didn't have the kind of scale that we have now. Shoot, we didn't even have the iPhone 10 okay. years ago. Uh, and, I look at, and I look at the assets that we have today. Uh, today we definitively have the best 5G network. Uh, we have a scale that we've never seen before post our merger with Sprint. Um, and, you know, we still have this incredible service DNA that lives throughout the, the entire combined company. So I feel really fortunate that we have a ton of assets and tools to use to create meaningful, impactful differentiation with our two competitors. So that's a one big one for me. And then the second big one, uh, and I think it's, it overlaps a lot of the things that we were talking about, is um, are we becoming a more simple, more digitalized company? And, and, and really for me, that's for two big reasons. The first and primary one is, uh, are we creating better customer experiences? Are we meeting the expectations of customers? Are we allowing customers to do the things that they want to do when and where they want to do them th through digital contemporary experiences? And then the second part of that for me is uh, the modernization of marketing. Uh, you know, leveraging uh, data that we have about customers and prospects and creating more contextualized, personalized marketing journeys right. for our customers. I, I think those are going to be the big things right. that I, I am measured on and I'm measuring myself yeah, on. No, that's a great roadmap. And uh, so obviously we're here at, at TV Disrupt. This is uh, the closing session here for a, a great event. And, and the, the bulk of the conversation here is the real shift in the marketplace to alternative cur currencies, right? So advertisers have been used to buying based on a single currency for the last 75 years. And uh, the market is shifting now to alternative currencies, to different ways to transact, whether it's cross-screen yeah. or outcome-based uh, transactions. Obviously, you guys have leaned into those notions for yeah. many, many years. Uh, but how do you feel about these shifts? Uh, do, do you think that the T-Mobile will be ready and, and, and willing to, to lean into transacting in and, and and alternative currencies in, in the near future? Um, I would say yes to both, re yeah. willing and ready and, and starting to do a lot of experimentation there. And, and I do, we still do think, even though we're a bigger company and we have a lot more scale, we still think being nimble and moving fast is still a huge strategic advantage and right. and priority for us, right. and I, I think um, you know again not to not to like use like lame sports analogies, but like skating where the puck is going is right. super super important, and yeah. you've got to you've got to be uh, aware and realistic about the fact that the market is changing, and I think the people that uh, are the first movers are going to be the ones that that win, right. and so for for us you know th thinking of, thinking about this. Uh, both experimenting and, and taking some some um, some swings are going to be really important for us. Yeah, that's well said. All right, Mike, thank you so much for having me over to this awesome mm -hmm. uh, studio you guys built here. It's great to see you, and thank you for being on TV. Yeah, Disrupt. thank you so much. It's great to be here. Thank you.